Hi, this is Political News in 5, and today is October 2nd, 2022. I'm Aisha Osuri. Happy Independence Day, our 62nd. Nigeria can and will be great in our lifetime. Now, the first thing I'm starting with is the presidential campaign kickoffs, which officially started on September 28th. APC promptly informed us that they were postponing theirs to deal with the fallout from their presidential campaign list, which I'll talk about later. Now, we found out that that's not the only reason why they were postponing because Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the APC candidate, is missing in action. He failed to turn up when all presidential candidates were invited to sign the peace accord and to vow to adhere to the electoral acts. And it's not the first time that he's missing in action. The first time that we've seen presidential candidates together and he wasn't there was during the NBA conference. Now, this heightens concerns about his health and though we've been told that he's away only because he needs to rest it echoes what we saw with the Yardwa campaign in 2007 where he was often missing due to ill health now those concerns then were brushed aside and we saw what the country had to go through because of that now we saw also what we had to go through because of Buhari's ill health in this last administration now some people will point out that being ill doesn't prevent people from being able to govern properly and they give examples from across the world a favorite one is franklin d roosevelt one of Amer america's one of the united states of america's greatest presidents and the only one who served three terms as an example he had polio that kept him confined to a wheelchair now what you should say to them when they say that as a defense to be us knowingly electing someone who's suffering from ill health that cannot be treated in nigeria is to ask them one how many days months off did Franklin D. Roosevelt have to take because of ill health while he was president? And two, Franklin D. Roosevelt was known to invest heavily in polio and contributed to all sorts of science research because he understood as someone who had suffered the illness how important it was to treat it. We don't have any indication that Yaradwa and Buhari have done the same. We don't even know what Buhari had. So twice bitten, thrice shy. We should not be knowingly electing anyone who is incapable and infirm. Nigeria's problems are too complex. We need somebody who's able and present. Now, the other campaigners, presidential candidates have continued with their own campaigns. It seems like manifestos are no longer in because Atiku is the only one out of the popular four who has released his manifesto. Now, manifestos give us a sense of a candidate's vision and policies around key issues. It also gives us the basis for engaging them when we meet them in public or during a debate. So we need those manifestos. Obi's candidacy continues to electrify Nigerians. All of yesterday, Independence Day, there were rallies all across the country, people looking really happy, thousands, millions coming out to show their support. His candidacy is obviously giving the status quo politicians a lot of sleepless nights, and all the polls are showing that he's ahead, though, though there are quite a large number of people who are still undecided. This is very exciting. Let's continue to watch. Now, the second thing I want to talk about this week is the APC presidential campaign list which is causing ripples across the party some governors Kwara, Ondo, Cross River are not happy the national chairman of the party is allegedly also not happy the grouse is that they had nominated people and those people's names are missing from the list now it's hard to feel empathy for the governors because the truth is they have a lot of power they are the ones who determine who become federal and state legislators they even sometimes pick who becomes ministers from their state now, Tinubu is a veteran of elections. He probably knows who he wants to be on that list. But at the same time, it does, it's not strategic for him to alienate the governors at this time going into the elections. Let's see whether this issue will be resolved. Now, for average Nigerians, what we should be trying to demand for at the next round of electoral reforms is that we stop splitting up our elections into national and national assembly president governor and state assembly let's have all those elections on one day there's a rigging structure in that separation of the elections that should end and besides it will save us money finally i want to talk about the ongoing drama in house of pdp last week we were entertained by officials who were returning 28.8 million naira to the party some say that this is part of the ongoing pressure on Ayu to resign the allegations that he has embezzled between 10 to 15 billion that the PDP got from the sale of nomination forms. Some are saying that there's some inconsistency in the return of these funds because this is how things are done. Apparently, swallowing money is not the preserves of monkeys and snakes in Nigeria. 
whatever the case, the ongoing drama in PDP and the allegation, allegations of mismanagement of funds is nothing new. One year from now, we'll find that PDP, if it doesn't win the presidential election, will be as broke as ever. It will be because they didn't invest wisely the funds that they have now. Whatever the case, another indication for Nigerians on why to avoid the major parties. They're not interested in doing anything new. They're not interested in reforms. Now, if you haven't picked up your PVC, please do so. If you registered between June last year and January this year, your PVC is ready. Go out and get it and vote for the future of Nigeria. That's it for me this week on Political News in 5. Have a great week ahead. Bye.